And welcome back to Black Columbus Votes Matter 2023, streaming live right here on Unboss uh, Columbus. We've been on uh, air with you now for almost three hours. When it started, uh, the night, we didn't know what it was uh, going to bring at 8 o'clock. Uh, we assumed we knew what it was uh, going to bring, but uh, we, we didn't know. We've seen some races uh where some candidates expected to win by a landslide and now they are stuck in too close to call there were some races that were expected to be too close to call or simply too early to call and they've been called uh there's uh other races that we won't know who wins until all the votes are finally counted in about two weeks or so We'll recap all of that in a moment, but I'm actually uh, looking forward to uh, this uh, next conversation, which ties into everything. And uh, really, just so honored to have this uh, next guest on. I'm uh, going to bring uh, Lisa and Tiffany on board. Lisa, tell us a little bit about this uh, next guest, because I'm excited that uh, he's here uh, in uh, his uh, capacity and that we're about to have this conversation that we are. But uh, before uh, you uh, introduce him, Y'all have been on the move tonight, man. You got to unmute, Lisa. Okay, there we go. Yes, we have. We are currently on our way to the Board of Elections to see if we see any folk here. Um, we are going to be talking to um, Ohio State Conference of the NAACP's president, um, Tom Roberts, and we're going to be talking about education. Um, he is he wants his legacy to be that he is the education president here is our graphic of um the bus and you will see that our black babies are at the back of the bus and we know that there was a whole civil rights struggle for that not to be the case so president roberts i'm going to let you take it from there well thank you and you guys be safe out there <laughs> driving and talking it's challenging uh thank you for allowing me to be on the program this actually journey goes back to about 2016 or 17 when my predecessor, Civil Edwards McNabb, who was there in Columbus, began a dialogue with our national office. And then we began a dialogue with the Ohio Department of Education to challenge them on, on how we change the paradigm of education for our children. And as the bus demonstrates there, uh, the graphic, shows that when the state of Ohio uh, put forward its Every Child Succeed Act, its Essence Plan, it, it, it uh, lowered ex expectations for black students over white students. And that really made me and others upset. And so the, uh, their task force on education has reviewed every school district in the state of Ohio, and there are roughly 611 school districts and we know where each one of those school districts stand when it comes to, as I call them, our babies, when it comes to uh, literature, when it comes to math and science. So we know where they stand. And so we've been trying to get our 11 school districts uh, to take a look at, at the report cards in their schools and to work with the school boards and others uh, and, and parental groups to, to improve uh, the, the quality of education in those school districts. So uh, my goal is to, is to help the 11 units uh, implement a better review of what we need to do to move our children beyond uh, where they are today. You know, uh, we are coming up to uh, celebrating Brown versus Board of Education. And the bottom line of Brown said, when states take on education, they sh shall do so where education is is quality for everyone basically so that's our goal i spent the last two days this past weekend in, in washington dc with our national education director ivory tolson and he shared with us our plans as a national organization i think ohio was well ahead of that plan but i think our goal is just to challenge the 1100 school districts in ohio and especially those 11 or 12 that have the most of our babies. 
So I'm glad to be here and to share my thoughts. Lisa, you're muted again, Lisa. Mm -hmm. What we know is that Ohio, it's been a long day, <laughs> is not living up to the promise of Brown because what we have is academically segregated programs in, in integrated schools. Speak to us a little bit about the difference that the Ohio Department of Education has for black babies versus the majority white population. Well, I think that graph shows it all. If we we can see that again, the school bus, because it really sets out uh, where, th for some reason, they believe the the every child succeed access that they have to have uh, standards. Uh, but what they're saying is that they want black children to uh, standards, not standards necessarily, so much as expectations. They have lower expectations for black students over white students. And if our children are already uh, so many years behind in the area of literacy and reading and math, uh, to lower that expectation is simply going to make it worse. Uh, it's not to say teachers are not going to teach, but they don't have a higher goal to be set for. You know, so when we set goals high for our students, we know they will. They achieve them. Excel. And they will achieve them. They will excel. There's a good book I'm encouraging people to read. It's called uh, Young, Gifted, and Black, where they talk about specifically uh, when our children are challenged, they meet that challenge. So we're upset that the expectations are lower, but that's not going to stop us because the campaign is for me to take this word to every to 11 school districts, and I have to go to 611, I will, but especially those 11 or 12 or 13 that have the majority of our black babies. So I think part of our, our campaign has to be to have our school districts think what we're doing and think how we can make our children excel. I'll give you an example of what I'm talking about. We know that the schools of arts, students who are in the schools of, of arts excel it's something there that makes them interested in, what, in being in a school of art. We need to make every school district in Ohio have those same kind of characteristics. What makes that school excel? The students love coming to school. They love to be able to produce their product, whatever it might be. Every school district should be the same way. So that's our goal. I'm not going to wait for 10 or 11 years. We have to do this right now. You know, the, the fierce, uh, the fierce uh, ecstasy of now is what we need to be working on. Exactly. And we also know that sometimes we get sidetracked into those conversations of high poverty, but we also know, and on the work that the task force has done, that there are schools that are in 100% poverty that whose children are achieving at the A and B rate. There are best academic practices to teach black children and we have to press that issue. And I think to, to go to that point is that if you go to the Ohio Conference in AACP website, all this information is there, but we highlight those six or seven school districts that we think are the best in the state. We specifically did that so school boards and school superintendents wouldn't say, well, that's what's going on in Connecticut. That's what's going on in New York. These are happening in Ohio. So there are school exactly. districts like Steubenville and Akron Early Learning that are doing exactly what we're asking every school district to do. And so there are models and examples here in Ohio that we want people to go to our website, see, listen, and hear, and help us be, be uh, advocates at the local level. So I'm uh, glad, so uh, Mr. Uh, President, that uh, you brought up that uh, local level uh, and being advocates at it. Uh, you were in the green room while uh, the conversation was uh, going on uh, just a few moments ago with the uh, two newest board members to uh, the uh, Columbus City School Board. Um, when it comes to the conversation we're having tonight with you and the work uh, that uh, the state conference of uh, the uh, of our NAACP uh, that uh, we're, we're doing uh, when it comes to uh, education and I mean, th these numbers are... <laughs> Aren't numbers you want to be uh, looking at? Uh, if if uh, that that's mildly uh, putting it, uh, what 
advice would you uh, give to these uh, two uh, political newcomers uh, who were for the first time ever coming on to uh, one of the uh, largest uh, boards of education in the country, they actually have the opportunity to do what I'll call some good because they've never been in politics before. So they, for lack of a better term, they, they, they aren't politically corrupt yet. They're still green in a lot of ways. Well, having spent, um, gosh, close to 30 years in politics, I don't think politics is a bad word. It, uh, it are those it is those individuals who are in the elected office, such as some of our members in the Ohio General Assembly and in Congress, who make politics a bad word, a bad term. So we all are engaged in in politics in one form or another. It could be in education, it could be in the state house, it could be in the church. But to your point, I would say to them to go to our website. I would say, look at what we're telling school districts to do. I would say, look at your local school uh, uh, report card and seeing how our children are doing. I would say, visit those schools, talk to those parents, because that's where I think, uh, for example, Steubenville, who we look at as one of the best, the, the superintendent said he put all of his, his uh, administrators in a bus. They drove the school district. They talked to parents. And they, they got insight. And so it's really becoming familiar with those kids, familiar with those parents, and then holding everybody to a higher standard, even themselves being more accountable for what they do. Look at what your report says, then work on how we can improve it. And we'll be glad to sit down with them and, and help them see that. The task force is very interested, especially the 11 school districts, in, in living up to uh, what Brown has told us to do. President Roberts, this is Tiffany White. How are you this evening? Go ahead, I'm sorry, I can't hear you. This is Tiffany White. How are you this evening? Good and finding you, yes. Good, I'm actually asking this question because a mem as a member of the Columbus NAACP, um, our president came out against the levy, which would tax, in essence, mostly our seniors, because those are our homeless right. in the city. Um, how do we get them to get on board with what you're doing on the state level to come up with these things that are the best practices for our Black children in the city of Columbus? Well, I think people like members like you need to take it back to your leadership there in Columbus. Uh, I think you have to do what you have to do on levies and things of that nature. You know, the General Assembly still uh, has not got it right, but they punt it. You know, the, uh, I don't know, this is probably year 14 or 15 uh, to Perry, you know, when we still yeah. rely on the property taxes to pay for education. And the General Assembly said they did what they thought they should do. And then uh, the Supreme Court put it back in the General Assembly's lap, and General Assembly basically said, we've done our best, that's it. Well, school funding is still an issue. And so we're constantly relying on, on low wealth districts to provide the money, uh, those property taxes. I was in the General Assembly when this debate took place. Having said that, it is one of those issues. But I think if we don't look at uh, improving our education, in every one of our school buildings in our school districts that I think we are failing as, as this generation living up to Brown versus Board of Education. Uh, and, and as Lisa pointed out, we have academic segregation going on right now. And our babies are not, are not uh, passing. They're not you know, doing well in these subjects. You know, I think it's too much uh, of the uh, of the gadgetry, and we need to go back to reading books. We need to go back to having libraries in our homes uh, and, and having conversations. And so groups in the community, who we, you know, the black church uh, and sororities and fraternities uh, need to, and are, but need to step up more and take on some of these uh, challenges. So for me, uh, every school district, and especially the 11, need to have a local group that's going to look at what our children are doing in those three major areas, uh, language, arts, 
science and math and work on how we can improve them. Our babies can, and we know uh, we can see them on a daily basis when we talk to them. They can do, they can do those things. We need to challenge a little bit, a little bit more and, and give them the rewards, you know, so they know that they are valued and that their education is of value to them. Definitely. That is so important. Currently in Columbus, 65.5% of children are less than proficient. There's a lot of work to be done and we need to hit the road and get it done. And I think part of what we have to understand is what do those tests tell us? You know, and, and that's one tool to be used. But if we challenge our children, understand where they're coming from, they will excel. They will exactly. perform. Study after study after study has convinced us of that. And so um, we're just looking at one tool, and that's that's the test. But I think if, if we look at other ways of assessing what they're doing, we will see those children will improve. And let's not let the pandemic uh, also sidetrack us. Yes, those were years when we were, were not, uh, we were not in, in classrooms. And some people are still, students are still struggling from that, but I still think that they can excel and we need to make, we need to make sure that happens. Definitely they can excel. And we also know that there were districts that during the pandemic were still excelling so that their children were not, 65% of their children were not failing. So we can't continue to lean on crutches because our babies are, are suffering. Exactly, exactly. All right, uh, President uh, Roberts, uh, <laughs> my phone is literally uh, blowing up here from, uh, uh, you wouldn't believe it, people from uh, both sides of uh, the aisle, and I'm not making this up. Uh, one uh, person, um, if I say their name, uh, you would uh, probably more than undoubtedly uh, know them. Uh, they were shocked and honored at the same time that uh, you took the time to have this uh, conversation with us because of how important that it is. But to uh, use the uh, phrase that they and uh, the uh, couple others have said, they've uh, they said they're thankful for all the work that uh, you've done uh, in this uh, field around this uh, topic in uh, particular. And they said, uh, you're uh, just a legend, uh, is the phrase uh, they're uh, using. I'm sure uh, you, you would say no, but I, I mean, your advocacy, to uh, use a word that uh, you just use, uh, speaks for itself, and it's because of uh, leaders like you that um, continue to fight uh, and continue to teach and implore and uh, my generation and in younger generations to fight and not just uh to fight but how to fight and how to uh, advocate on topics like this is very very important uh you, you mentioned you spoke and uh you uh communicated and elaborated on a lot of things but the one takeaway i uh i took from this is that um Two things, actually. Number one, you have to understand the rules uh, of engagement when it comes to this. So, yes, uh, everything should go back to a local level. And yes, all of these local races are important. But uh, when it comes to topics like this, uh, what's uh, very, very uh, important in understanding the rules of engagement is that uh, this fight needs to take place in the state house. The reason why, uh, and this leads to uh, my uh, final question, that this needs to take place in the uh, state houses. I want to get uh, your thoughts around what just uh, went down in the uh, court system and uh, a little bit in the uh, General Assembly, too. It started in the General Assembly. Then it went to uh, the court uh, courts, uh, basically the fight that uh, with the uh, governor taking over the uh ohio department of uh, education and kind of bringing it under his uh, purview what are uh, your thoughts uh, around that and does it harm us even more as uh, a black and brown community especially in terms of uh this conversation uh, right now and the topic of discussion around brown b board and uh, the work that uh you're, you're doing and advocating about so let me let me say this to you uh, the General Assembly and the governors in Ohio 
have been in control of public education since Governor Voinovich. And so I can't blame all this on the state school board. The state school board has had their own issues. But going back to Governor Voinovich, they've had their hands on public education going back that far. Uh, the current president and, and former Speaker of the House, you know, uh, for some school board members to not want to be reappointed because they were doing the kinds of things that we were asking them to do on the state school board. I have no confidence in the Ohio General Assembly or the governor or his appointed person to be the cabinet member of education to do the things that we're asking to be done in our report because they have failed to come around when it comes to uh, fully funding education, going back to Perry. You know, so for them, uh, for, for the General Assembly, uh, for, for, for the question, for me to think the General Assembly is going to do something different than they have, they've been doing for the last couple of years, I don't believe they are. I think they believe they've done their job and uh, it's all about, uh, about what they want to do in their own legacy. I think that was the word you used, legacy. Uh, but I don't, I don't trust them. So that's why it has to be a local issue. That's why it has to be, as I say uh, in several of my presentations, Paul Paul and Mama taking on education from a microscopic perspective at the local school districts and advocating with our school boards for improvement. We need to think outside the box. You know, charter schools were a way for us to supposedly find best practices. We never got the report back saying these are the best practices. That's why we have to, as Black parents, need to take on public education at the local level, work with our school boards, work with our, work with our local communities uh, leaders to improve the quality of education at our school level. We can do it. I don't trust the General Assembly to do it because they've been in control of it for so many years and have not improved one bit. They thought taking over school district as they did in Youngstown up in the rain was the route to go. And they spent more money and the students have not been as successful. So I don't trust the General Assembly one bit. Well, uh, I, I'm in agreement with you when it uh, comes to Mama and Papa. That's uh, how I become the uh, young man as I uh, am uh, today. Uh, uh, I'll take it back even one step further to great grandma and great grandpa. Uh, not only listening to uh, their stories about them, like in, imploring and putting in education uh, uh, in on you. I'm like well read because of them, and I have those uh, libraries in my home that uh, you you speak about. I think my library has a uh, personal library that is as close to like 600 uh, plus uh, books. Uh, but uh, not only that, I'll uh, inch it a little bit further. My uh, mom and grandma, they all done something a little different with me, my siblings and cousins. And when we were doing homework and doing workbooks and things like that, we couldn't use the eraser. And if there was any Remblance, oh, and I would hate it, but now I, res now I respect it. Uh, if there was any remblance of any race mark on a homework, they would take it and ball it up, and we would have to go get a, a new worksheet or whatever from the teacher the next day. Of course, we would be docked the uh, points on our homework assignment, but that also uh, taught us everything that uh, you're speaking about and referencing uh, right now. Yeah, and, and, and the other thing is, is that my mother... Uh, started in early child education so we know what we need to do and uh when i was in general assembly it was uh, ray miller who was the first person to put money into uh, early childhood you know so that just tells us that we know what works and we've known it since the 60s and early 70s that's why i'm saying as community leaders we need to take on this charge and make it happen working with our school board and other leaders so we can do it. We just have to have the, the uh, conviction of now for it to happen. Yes. Lisa? You're muted, Lisa. Lisa, uh, can I, you hit the unmute button, please? It's been a long night. <laughs> Yes, it is. <laughs> Thank you so much, President Roberts, for being on tonight and speaking with us and for honoring your commitment to my father and being 
having education be your legacy. Well, thank you very much. Thank you for you for continuing to push me in the task force. And I look forward to further conversations with you in, in this uh, this broadcast on this topic. Most I definitely. Don't know, I don't know what all the questions were, so maybe you can share them with Lisa. She can share them with me so I can understand uh, where they're coming from. But I appreciate it. And it's been a long night. Time to see. <laughs> yes, to thank you. Yeah. Yes, thank you for uh, your uh, time, uh, Mr. President. And uh, we hope to be speaking again very, very soon in the near future. We will do that. Thank you all. All right. Have a good one.